Well, it is National Camera Day, and we are talking to two special folks this morning. We have Evan and Teddy joining us right now via Skype with more on how we can really help our photography, no matter what our skill level is. And you guys have compiled uh, a list of things that we can keep in mind. Uh, would you mind running us through your list of how we can kind of sharpen up our photography skills? Oh, wow. This morning, we had the fun opportunity to be on Global News because it was International Camera Day or something like yeah, that. Something I don't really know. I don't know. It seems like every day for us. They want to have a conversation about... The, I think the quote is, taking cool pics in the summer. We are very educated in the art of taking t cool pics in the summer. Yeah. So cool. Evan put together like 10 little tips. Nine, actually. I couldn't find a tenth. Nine tips to help our photography no matter what our skill level is. And so we're just going to outline them here and give you a little bit of a, a more thorough explanation of what they are. It's a really hard thing to outline how to take better pictures because photography is an art form. It's a skill set. There's nothing I can say in a four and a half minute conversation that... It's a lady over Skype. Organize the photos and... It takes time to learn, but it you know did kind of make me think about little things that you can do to not only enhance the photos you take, but enhance your experience with photography and how you enjoy the photos afterwards. Yeah. So, anything to add? No, you did a great job. How was my listening face? Here's a collage of me having bad listening faces. <laughs> so that being said, here are nine little tips to help you take better photos this summer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Try a different lens. Typically when you buy a camera, it'll come with what's called a kit lens, and it'll be a zoom lens. It'll have multiple different focal lengths, and it'll have a high aperture. So the lowest aperture it'll go is like four. Often it's actually like 3.5 to 5.6. <laughs> so as you zoom in, it, the aperture gets higher. That is Anyways. irrelevant. We'd recommend using this kit lens, trying it out, see what happens, but then also buying a different lens. My next favorite is a 50 millimeter. That's the first one that I got outside of my kit lens when I started doing photography. It just gives you a totally different look. It gives you that creamy, blurred out background. It's called bokeh. And that automatically takes your photos from looking kind of amateur to looking professional. Put a little extra effort into changing up your perspective. If you're just walking around, always shooting from standing height, your pictures can kind of have one note because it's always the same perspective. Getting down lower and shooting someone up, you can frame them up against the sky and then the subject will be a lot more prominent. Or if you have a really busy horizon, put the camera up higher, shoot down, and then you can frame your subject up against the ground. This is especially important when you're shooting dogs and kids. You want to squat down on their level so that the camera can capture the world from their perspective. An easy thing you can do to immediately create more interest in an image is to shoot your subject through an object in the foreground. Try shooting through objects and creating depth by putting things in the foreground. Follow the light. Sunset is our favorite time to shoot because the sun is so low that it's literally being diffused by the atmosphere. Evan told me to say that, I don't know what that means. Later on in the evening, when you have a nice sunset, you get a beautiful glow. It's not always possible to change the light you're given, but it's almost always possible to change your subject and move them in and out of the light. Right from the beginning, you wanna have a good organization system so that you know where your photos are and if you lose your computer or if your computer crashes, you don't lose these special moments. If you're doing a lot of your work on your laptop, it's great to use a mobile hard drive. It's not enough just to have one copy. Even if you have your copies on this hard drive, if you drop it and it crashes, there goes all your memories. If you do have a dedicated workspace inside your home, grab a stand-up hard drive. These are considerably cheaper than these smaller ones. It's just hard to take around because you have to lug around a, a power adapter and a USB cable. Okay. Go for it. Ready. Energy. Energy! Can I sit up like this? Yes. Start a non-digital project with your photos. There is something to be said about taking the time to actually get your photos printed and put them into something special like a book or a calendar. Every year now for Christmas for our families, we take some of our favorite photos and we put them in a calendar. There is something so different and special about interacting with your photos with an actual tactile way. Find your favorite camera system. Evan! Mm -hmm. 
as you start dabbling more in photography, you'll start acquiring more lenses, getting more gear, and it can be tempting to bring it all with you when you go take photos. But at times, fiddling around with cameras and lenses can take away your attention from actually taking good photos. We usually leave this lying around the house with a battery and a memory card inside so that if there's a moment where Lola's being adorable or there's a memory that needs to be captured, it's just a right around the corner and we can turn it on, take a photo, and then we have it forever. Sometimes the best camera is the one that you want to take with you. I know we just talked about find your favorite camera system, but that might be the most expensive gear that you have. And when you're going on the lake, you might not want to bring that camera with you because then you'll be spending all your time worrying about protecting it, not getting it wet, instead of actually enjoying the moment. That's where it's helpful to have some cheaper gear. It can be anything from, you know, your phone, which you always have with you, or a GoPro. These guys can really take a beating. We bought a camcorder to take with our trips because this thing was like 150 bucks, 200 bucks. If it breaks, it would not be a big deal to us. Photograph what you find fun. If you find something fun and you're interested in it, photograph it. It's what makes your perspective unique. What I find myself taking the most photos of are obviously people and couples. That is my favorite, duh. But I also love taking pictures of my husband and my dog and of beer. Building out a van right now, I'm taking a lot of videos and photos of that. The main thing that we want to get across with people getting into photography, if you're not having fun with it, try shooting something else. And sometimes, even if you're really enjoying taking photos this summer, it's just a good idea to put the camera down and remember to actually enjoy the time you're spending with the people you love. Oh, don't do that again. Oh my God, I'm so pissed now. I don't even know how to change my mood. And I'm not being dramatic.